right, it is episode number four of To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. Today, I have for your listening pleasure my lovely friend, Jeff. Ohio Jeff, how you doing, brother? I'm all right. I go by uh, Jeff Exotic now. Thank you. Jeff Exotic. <laughs> You're looking magnificent. You're looking beautiful. I gotta stay, with the, gotta stay with the times. The hair is glorious. I love it. It's very appropriate yeah. for uh, the uh, Outbreak podcast over Skype. Fucking Tiger this King. This is what my life has become. Just hanging out, drinking Coors. <laughs> Bleached mullet and then a tiger blanket. I yes. love that. I love that. So I'm assuming you really liked the uh, Tiger King documentary. Yeah, surprisingly so, because I saw it, you know, two weeks ago when we went on lockdown here in Jersey. And I'm like, ah, that's that looks horrible. And then everybody <laughs> started jumping on. And then I'm like, fuck it, I'll watch it. And I pretty much watched it in less than two days. I'm <laughs> like, I can't get enough. How crazy does it get? <laughs> Oh, and yeah, me and my girl watched that five, six. all in one sitting, man. We started it in, like, the afternoon, and we watched it all the way into the night. We couldn't stop. It's like fucking potato chips. Yeah, I mean, it was unreal. I'm like, I thought I was white trash. I'm like, I'm nothing. I'm fucking an upstanding model citizen yeah. compared to these guys. I always thought I was white trash as well. I don't think I can consider myself uh, white trash anymore after watching <laughs> The Tiger King. The most As amazing I drink my course light ever done Tiger ever. King. Tiger King, son, Tiger King. Tiger King. So you were saying uh, before we started the cameras that uh, they might even be coming out with another episode of the Tiger King. Yeah, uh, next week uh, Jeff Lowe just put out on the old Facebooks that uh, there's a new episode coming out. I am on four Tiger King uh, Facebook pages. Yeah, and three of the four came out with that that it's it all hit at the same time. Like, it must be true. Dude, the second I finished that uh, that freaking show, I went and logged on to every social media Joe Exotic Tiger King meme page I could find. My stream oh, is lit awesome. up, son. The the best is titties for Joe Exotic because you get titties and gay tiger porn sex. <laughs> titties for joe exotic i'm gonna have to get that one on my uh, that's a facebook one yes sir oh man i'm gonna get titties for joe exotic going as well my yes yeah my facebook stream is just filled with joe exotic memes i heard they reopened the investigation into carol baskins and the murder yes. of her husband and i that think is that's true. fantastic that bitch totally killed that dude i mean come on i mean she was kind of bragging about how to kill a guy and feed him to tigers on the show what well, when she said you don't you don't spray cologne on them. You spray you put sardine on. I'm like, I'm sitting there in my girlfriend's apartment. I'm like, she just admitted to it. She just admitted to it by saying that statement. For real, man. Like, how do you know that fact that you can get tigers to eat whatever you want if you put sardine oil on it? I mean, you fucking murdering bitch. You murdering and bitch. And how do you go hate everybody that puts tigers in cages when? You put tigers in cages. I mean, when you have the smallest tiger cages out of all of them. Yeah, exactly. She's out got of a all tiger in a fucking cage. I couldn't even fit into behind her, and it's like, what the hell, bitch? You, you hypocritical bitch. Carol they Baskin. They gotta put their heads through that little hole to get something to drink. I'm like, that's horrible. Joe's. I mean, they were white trash, but they were clean, and they were big. I'm like, Jesus. Yeah, at least his tigers had room to run around and, like, uh, you know, play on all kinds of shit. Like, hers just seemed like they were locked up in little tiny cages. I mean, she had a, she had a nice display, like, walkthrough area, I guess, but whatever. You know, let's just talk shit on her anyways, because she's Carol fucking oh, it's Baskins. Cool. Carol it's, fucking it's not, Baskins, not, that's why. It's not talking shit if it's the fucking truth. Fucking Carol fucking Baskin. Fucking Carol fucking Baskin. Did you hear uh, Baskin Robbins is dropping the Baskin part in their name? I did see that. That is <laughs> fantastic. I love that so much. Yeah, they don't want to be associated with that murdering bitch, Carol oh. fucking Baskins. I I heard I heard she killed Epstein too. I mean, did she? She was the uh, she was the actual uh, cellmate for Epstein. Yes, yes, she she was. She was there. She she had part in it. God damn it. Yeah, she's got to... We're just going to have to feed her to her own fucking tigers. I think that's the hey. only solution. 
This with sardine oil, oil not fucking cologne. Problem. Yeah, with sardine oil. You got to remember, folks, it's sardine oil that will yes. make tigers eat anything you want. Not cologne, unless not cologne. unless it's Brute 33. That, that, that drives the women crazy. Ah, see? We're on the same page, brother. On the I, same I may, page, my friend. I love the Brute. I, I may know from experience in 1987. <laughs> that one time it worked? Hey. Hey, that one time is like a thousand times now. 60% of the time. It works every time. That's fucking great. That's great. So, uh, yeah. So we're stuck right, here. I gotta in take the... this off a little bit because oh, it's hot as shit it's... in here. That tiger skin's super hot, huh? Yes. So the, to uh... see this ZZ Top shirt. Oh, ZZ wait, let's see top. It. ZZ Top shirt. I love it. Okay. Yeah. That, was, that was one of my best concerts since I moved here. ZZ Top? It was Cheap Trick and ZZ Top. Cheap Trick are awesome. I, yes. I, I've I've worked with Cheap Trick, and they uh, were probably the coolest guys I ever worked with. Like, we didn't know. Like, I was part of the house, not part of the Cheap Trick crew. And oh, we nice. loaded their whole show on the stage. We get everything going. Everything's powered on. Shit's working. And then the, uh, the techs uh, were like, all right, cool. We're gonna take it from here. We go outside. We're smoking cigarettes. We think it's the, uh, we think it's the crew. We think it's like the road crew, whatever that we're smoking cigarettes with. You know, just 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 roadies, stagehands, and shit. Like I don't know these guys. And then the guitar techs come out onto the dock, and they go, "All right, guys, we're ready for you. Come on in for sound check." And it was we've been hanging out on the dock for like 20 minutes with Cheap Trick, and nice. they're just all in their regular clothes, with like glasses and hats on. And we just did not realize that that was fucking cheap trick we were hanging out with and they were the most down to earth coolest dudes ever that ever nice. and they loaded their own stage set up all their own equipment you know like they just are they're really cool guys i, I really had a lot of respect for that band because you don't see that very often in the industry no exactly not now i mean it's just awesome i mean i saw cheap trick first time at the ohio state fair and i mean they were awesome and they talked to the crowd. I mean, seen them a couple times since then. And this last show, I mean, ZZ Top is doing 50 years as the same band, which is, they said on their documentary that that was the longest that one band with the same members have been together. And I believe it. It's 50 years. Who else can you think of that has not changed members? And some people like ZZ Top. Some people don't. I like them. I always, always have. Ever since the limit. Like. It's like ACDC, man. They're going to throw a tasty yeah. groove your way. And yeah. it, it, it's and it's right up the middle, man. You know, it just it is a good song. Like, it's it just cuts cuts to you, you know. It's not going to stand out amongst the most creative songs of all time. But, but it, that's a groove. It's a groove, yeah. and you can feel it. You know, there's just and a simple thing to it that's just beautiful. You'll probably cut this out. You want to hear a funny story from that night? I ain't cutting nothing out, man. So yes, it was me. I do want to hear a funny story. It was me and two guys from work and his wife. And they drive me down. And it was down in fucking Camden, of all places. So just imagine North Las Vegas amplified by 25 it is Camden, New Jersey. It's a shit show. So we go down, and I know I'm not driving, so I'm getting hammered. Imagine that. And after the show, I've drank two fish bowls of vodka in this blue shit. And we're walking out, and all the, the uh, fake T-shirt guys are selling stuff. And there's this hot chick around, like, six guys. And I just go walking out. I go, hey, watch this, guys. I jump in the middle and go, I want you to want me. <laughs> and my friends were like, they just drew back. They thought that they were going to fucking fight. And for like six months, every time somebody saw me, they're like, I want you to want me. Sure, I'm sure it's probably funnier because I'm drunk, but it's all right. It's always funnier when you're drunk. Everything's funnier when you're drunk, you know? It's, uh, it just makes uh, sitting around a table and, and doing nothing a good fucking time, like a real good time, you know? Yes, especially and now. Alcohol's, Sorry, I gotta... alcohol's fantastic for that kind of shit. But yeah, I've, been, uh, dude, I've seen a lot of shows since I've been here. Fucking music scene's great here. Yeah. And the place where I live, I live in Metuchen, New Jersey, which nobody's uh -huh. fucking heard of. I never heard of it. I'm 45 minutes from New York. 
on the on the train. I don't even fight. I've never. Well, I've driven once. That was because of work. But I'm like, why drive to New York? It's fifteen dollars to drive into New York. I can hop on a train for twelve bucks and hop on the subways. I've seen Kiss there, LA Guns. I mean, Plus and then here in New want. Jersey is awesome. No driving home. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm 15, 20 minutes from The Rock, which is Prudential Center. I've seen probably 25 New York Jersey Devils games. Saw Kiss there. I love Kiss. I mean, it's just, just a great place. Yeah, Kiss was awesome. That's the best shape here. I, you know, like some people want to get involved with how good their music is or whatnot, but it's like, man, if you want to see the best production you've ever seen in your fucking life, yeah. you go see a Kiss concert. And if you haven't seen a Kiss concert, they are on their last leg of their tour, although every year they're on their last leg of their tour. Yes. You know, it's the 500th uh, finale tour. Those guys are old as I, shit. But that is an amazing show. It's so much fun. It's so much I fun. have my extra large 2000. <laughs> Uh, final tour shirt the first final tour the first one i still have it 20 years i cannot I, I cannot wear it but i still have it <laughs> it would be like a belly shirt but nobody wants to see that that'd be adorable that would be adorable i'm sure joe no, exotic would, would like it well i'm sure he would he would enjoy it very much if you wore a belly shirt the kiss, <laughs> kiss belly shirt but no being here it's it's so cool i can drive 15 20 minutes and be to a different city with a different bar with different local bands and stuff. And the music seems awesome. I was really getting into it until about a month ago. <laughs> yeah, when this fucking virus took us all down. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man. That's actually a good segue into uh, into the Corona talk, man. I was I, I personally am curious how things are going on the East Coast over there. Yeah, they're not as bad. In my little neck of the woods, I've been to Walmart, been to Sam's Club. It's not that bad. People are, it's funny because they will actually, if you're walking down the same aisle, they will move away and I'll move away. So we're not six feet apart, you know, or more than six and just, yeah. but the s stores are stocked. I mean, it's not as bad. And I'm, I'm right in the fucking epicenter. I'm 20 miles from fucking New York City. Really? Yeah. And that's good to hear. It's no, not really. Not no, for me. Not for you, but I mean for the rest <laughs> of the country. We don't know yeah, what to it, believe because you know you know media is just so out of control that it's yes. it's it's like unless you hear it from someone you know personally, it's like I don't know yeah. what the fuck's happening. You know, it's yeah, like I, one, one side of the news wants to say one thing, one side of the news wants to say the other thing, and then you get 50,000 exactly. different things all over your social media feeds, just confusing everyone, stressing everyone out. And it's like, what the fuck's really happening out there? I mean, out here I, in Vegas, man, there's no toilet paper on the shelves. There is none. You can't get toilet paper. You can't get Lysol. Uh, no, no paper products of any kind when we, when we go to Walmart. It's just not an option. Not an option at all. That's and nuts. uh yeah that's uh it's ridiculous man you know like like uh people are just fucking buying out the whole store and, and, and so i'm glad to hear that at least on the east coast it's coming back yeah and we went a couple times there was some toilet paper left not a lot but i'm like my thing is well, toilet paper of all things let's fucking buy bullets that's what you fucking need oh yes you know i can wipe my ass with anything yeah, get a bidet. Yeah. That's that's the one thing. Like uh, Amazon's got bidets for like a hundred bucks. You know, like screw getting a oh. shit ton of toilet oh, paper. Shit. Just take take a step up into that little luxury zone and buy yourself a nice little butt cleaner. You Dude, the, my first three months here, I lived with my boss. I rented out his basement, and they had a bidet. I never had one before. That's the greatest thing ever. I got to get one was, for my house. It was warm water, and it had a water warmer. Yeah. So it was warm water shooting into my ass. I'm like, this is the greatest thing ever. It's I used to, yeah. To my my shits took a lot longer then. You're spending more time post-shit than, uh, yes. than actually shitting. Yeah, you just sit there. I had the uh, toilet seat had a warmer on it. I mean, it was awesome. It was just like some big fat dude sat down right before you and made it warm for you. 
No, every, I mean, we know how much everybody loves that, right? So, well, that's well. If, if, if you've been to the dive bar in the men's bathroom, you know a warm toilet seat's not a good thing. No, <laughs> I do not sit on that fucking toilet at the dive bar. I do what everybody else does. I go in, I piss all over the fucking walls, and then I spit on the fucking handle of the faucet. That's how oh. you fucking do it at the dive bar. All right, take this off because. Uh... Yeah, I used to shit in the women's room all the time. Well, that's where you poop, man, when you're in a fucking dive. You know you go to the women's room. It's actually in some kind of decent condition. No bartender in their right mind is fucking taking care of that men's room. That is where you do cocaine, and that is about it. You know what I mean? I, like, I, I would not is, know anything disgusting. about that, sir. I know. I wouldn't say. Yeah, me neither. I don't know what you're talking about, man. I, ah. I, There's uh, a funny, funny story from the dive bar. One time I was, dude, it was like a Sunday fucking morning. I'm dropping a duke in the women's bathroom, and it was, it was, it was a struggle. So I'm still like, ah. And this girl walks in, and she's like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "I'm taking a shit." She goes running out. There's a guy in the bathroom. There's a guy in the women's bathroom. And the bartender's like, "Oh, that's just Ohio. Don't worry about it." <laughs> yeah, that's where we poop. Yeah, this I'm is like, a shithole. You I'm know? not gonna where bother you, you. Where else do you think you think we're pooping in that other fucking one that doesn't even have a door on the fucking front of it? No. Oh, come on, come on. No one's pooping in there. Good times. Super good times. You know, that's what it's all about. So yeah, so I'm glad to hear that you're doing good over there, though, man. I'm glad to hear that uh, that the East Coast is starting to straighten up a little bit. At least you're you're deck in the woods, right? Freaking uh, yeah. You know, and Jersey's going to do you right. There's a big fucking controversy. If there's a northern, central, and southern New Jersey, a lot of the old school folks are like, it's just north or south. I'm like, motherfucker, I'm right in the middle. That's the central part. And they're like, no, no, that's not. I'm like, fuck you. I'm in central fucking Jersey. That makes sense to me. I mean, it sounds like uh, you have a very legitimate point, sir. Well, there's very few people have ever said that in my life. <laughs> that's awesome man that's awesome so um yeah continuing on with like a little bit of corona update on the east coast because i personally am curious as to how it's going over there i know how it's going out here in vegas everyone's walking around in masks and gloves and uh sorry yeah, you're getting a most of the stores are closed down so uh, what's all closed down sorry most of the stores are closed down you know so a lot of the stores you can walk up and they'll like take online orders or over the phone orders yeah. or you know you can walk up to the doors and get some stuff but a lot of the stores are just flat out closed everywhere and i don't know is that how it is over there too yeah all the uh, technical non-essential stores yeah and, but like like for me a lot of people bitch about the laundromats being open i'm like Motherfucker, I live in an apartment. So what am I supposed to, how am I supposed to wash my clothes? Yeah. You know, are we going back to the fucking 30s and you know, wash my shit in the toilet? Oh, the laundromat's closed down, huh? So you can't... No, 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 no. They People are bitching that they're open. Oh. But it's all the fu fucking rich people that have their own houses and everything. Yeah, they don't I live know in an apartment. It's... They don't know what it's like living in a studio apartment with three other people and fucking having to go down and throw in on <laughs> get your laundry yeah. washed, man. Uh, best thing about New Jersey is, well, there's a couple things. Number one, I don't do my own laundry anymore. I found a laundromat that does wash and fold where I just drop my shit off. They weigh it, 99 cents a pound. I get my shit back folded, smelling like fucking apple sunshine. Oh, it's awesome. That's smart. And and I don't pump my own gas because they're all full service. Oh, Jersey's full service? I don't think I've been mm -hmm. to Jersey. So, yeah, I like when they do that, man. They do that in Oregon, too. I go up to Oregon every year. Yes. And they fucking, yeah, Oregon. Yeah. Yeah, Oregon's the same way. Yeah, they come Just out, they pump your gas for you. Everything's, yeah, it feels like you're in, like, an old-timey movie where, they, you know, they got the, the gas station attendant and the cert, you know, they're going to wipe your window I, down, do all the little things. I just things. feel like I'm... I just feel like I'm a fucking rock star. Fucking wash, pump my gas. Pump my gas. But, uh, that's funny. No, it's a good time. Well, good, man. So, yeah, you, yeah, you, you know guys me, are doing this I make much. the best. I make the best of whatever I can, whatever life hands me. Good. Life handed me a touch in New Jersey. So, uh, up until, 
I saw I was at the last New Jersey Devils game of the year. Because that's what I do. Because that's like, what I, I do. Go, go get hammered at a Devils game. <laughs> yeah, my buddy likes to uh, go see the uh, the Golden Knights out here in Vegas, man. Once they oh. once they started playing, everybody out here just became huge hockey fans, man. They fucking well, love going to I see those games. I was out there. They're, they're my number two team. Oh, good. I'm, from, I'm originally from Ohio, so the Columbus Blue Jackets are my number one. Gold Knights are number two. I've seen them uh, twice in New Jersey wearing my Gold Knights stuff, bitching at everybody because they're New Jersey fans. So, nah. But, yeah, I always I always go support the Gold Knights when they're, when they're around. Yeah, go Knights, man. Go Knights. Go Knights, go. And Unless got, it's against the Blue Jackets. Unless it's against the Blue Jackets. I you always like the Red Wings, you don't even but I'm not a real. I'm no, no, no. I'm not a sports sports guy very much. Um, yeah, I'll play some fantasy football with my friends for fun, but I've never been. I've never been the sports guy. I'm always an. I'm a nerd. That's what it comes down to. I'm a fucking nerd, man. You know, that just doesn't. That just doesn't tickle my butthole the way I like. Ah, uh, well, like Joe Exotic. Joe Exotic. Now, see, you get this crazy motherfucker playing with tigers like that. I am interested. Throw, throwing I'm, some I'm math. Lucky, I'm lucky I didn't meet that motherfucker when I was a teenager. He would offer me meth and tigers. I'd still be over there fucking dangling my balls on his eyebrows. Hey, I'm I'm 48 and I'm about to show my golden nuggets. Right? <laughs> <laughs> this is the most abs- absurd thing I've ever fucking seen in my life. What was him <laughs> as dressed as a priest talking about? His husband's gold nuggets in front of his mom, the kid's mom. The kid's mom. Whenever, that was when everybody insane. knows that that motherfucker was straight as hell. He's out banging all the girls at the tiger camp. And <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but Joe's got the best meth. You know, hey. I say, man, anything for some of that good meth. It is what it is. It's a spectrum these days. It's 2020, bro. We're all, it's, we're all on a spectrum, you know. It's not gay. If you're just trying to get some meth and tigers, you know, it's just it's just it's just a cock in your way, you know, for meth and tigers. Well, Who doesn't want I say, meth and tigers? I, I say it's not gay until Netflix makes a documentary about it. That's right. <laughs> Netflix decides my opinion for me. There you they, go. They just let me know what to think. I'll just I'll just watch whatever documentaries they have for me and just uh, accept that as the ultimate truth of the universe and and move on with my life. It's better than CNN, so. That's true. That's true. You know, you're getting you're getting way better information. Uh, I'll be a, a few a few days behind, but uh, <laughs> way better than than Fox or CNN or any of that fucking garbage <laughs> out there, man. You know, like, ugh. They're just trying as hard as they can to force the most fucking uh, attention-grabbing story on you. And you know, it pisses me off now. Like, I'll go over and, uh, to my folks' house and have the news on, and they literally just broadcast Facebook. They just go, oh, well, you know, we ain't got shit to tell you because there's not that much going on in the world. Uh, here's some Facebook fucking stories. It's just like, God damn, dude, really? You're just gonna, you're just gonna recycle Facebook media and, and, and call it the news? People are gonna pay yeah. you for that? Well, that's what they do. I mean, they don't, they, there's no, not one journalist I trust anymore. Nah. Nope. I mean, I grew up with like Walter Cronkite and shit, and he told it like it was. Yeah. Like it or not. Well, and they don't get to keep their jobs. Business, you know they want to they want clickbait bullshit. You talk. I keep talking over you. No, no, go ahead. We, I'm talking over you. No, nah, you're show. my guest, motherfucker. But so, once the media was bought out by whoever, you know, Fox is a, the right wing. Everybody else was bought out by Soros. I mean, Jesus, then take a fucking rocket scientist to figure it out. Right. That's why I go through NPR and BBC, uh, Britain. You know, you get, you just gotta, and what sucks is you gotta watch two different newscasts to get the story, and then you gotta figure it out for yourself. Yeah, you kind of just gotta decide what you feel like believing that day. Yeah, and it's horrible. That's kind of, that's kind of how I feel the world is now, you know? It's just like, ah, you know, there's so much information for it in either direction that it's like, uh, you just kind of, whatever you feel like believing is the truth to you now. 
and there is no yeah. real fucking truth because everybody has just flooded you, you know the fucking world with false information to the point where it's just like you can't even have a conversation with somebody you just can't no. because they're not willing to give up their side of the uh, of their truth that they believe you know for, even yeah. for a second even for a hypothetical second to have a fucking conversation with you they just want to scream in your face yeah, and, and if you say it's anything like, that dude, goes against nobody them. Nobody knows what's real, man. Well, let me talk about this. Oh, no, that's against me. Fuck you. You're you're a Nazi. You're this. You're that. Of course. Is what it is. Yeah, you know. That's, uh, that's the world we live in now. It's pretty sad because you can't, you can't get anywhere. There's just no, right, so, there's no dialogue to be had. All right, are you ready to dial it back to music? Because I'm ready to make a statement. You, re you ready to make a statement with music? I actually have some stuff here that you were talking about. Oh, wait about. a minute. Is that, no, is this a different one? Different statement? Well, it's before that. We're going to segue into that. We're going to segue I'm into gonna that? I'm going to be on video saying I despise Led Zeppelin. Oh! I really hate them. Musician-wise, they're all right, but guess what? They stole everything, and I don't like them. I just want it out there on the, the, the interwebs. I mean, they did steal a lot of uh, their music. They shouldn't have done that. They shouldn't have done that. They should have just, you know, been like, yeah, we were covering songs. No big deal. I'm, Do they need some I'm of the millions of dollars old. we made? They can have some of it, too, you know? But they go, oh, no, this is ours. It's like, no. Ah. No, it was not yours. It was clearly yeah, someone else's music you were playing. When, when everybody posts on Facebook, list one thing that you dislike that everybody else likes i'm like i fucking hate led zeppelin and my god i get death threats everybody's like fuck you you fuck i'm like fuck off yeah led it's zeppelin ridiculous sucks. well i can't say they suck because i i will still rock out to led zeppelin like a motherfucker oh, but they that's fine I, I i can't argue with the fact that they that 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 they, they stole that music they did they stole a bunch and, of music and they they made a shit ton of money off of it that's yeah, exactly. Cool. That's not cool. You go out and play whatever you want, man, but, like, you know, pay the people that wrote it for you. Yeah, exactly. What the fuck's wrong with that? And see how I segue into the local band that I really like here? I have some stuff Boom. pulled up for that local band. Did you want to see? I didn't discuss it with you before, but did you want to go with the music video first, or are you want me to pull the website up? It's up to you. I mean, the music video is for a song that they put out and did a video for. Because you know me, I'm ex-military, so I'm pro, pro military anything. Okay. And the first time I saw them, you ready for a little story? Give me a story, bud, and I'll uh, you know I'll go to the website and we'll look at their website while you tell us a story. Yep. We'll flash back and forth. This will be the game. So they play. they opened up for uh, Jeff Tate on the Operation Mind Crime 30 year anniversary tour. So I went and I went with a poker buddy of mine that I met here and they came out and sang the, the video to some gave all and they're waving American flags and shit. I'm like, fuck yeah, this band's awesome. And about a week later, started dating this girl. And we started talking about stuff and I told her what I'd been doing. She's like, hey, my, one of my best friend's sons in a band, he plays drums. Uh, that might be the band. And she went and checked, and here she knows the drummer from Broken Past. And we went and saw him do a fundraiser, and I've seen him like four or five times. They were just awesome, played the majority of their original music, and then bust in some classics, heavy metal. Lately, they've been doing uh, Indians by Anthrax. Oh, they, I like that song. Dope. It, it's one of them songs that like, oh, that fucking song's awesome. Why don't more people cover this song? Well, everybody can't cover that song. I think once you're the one band that covers that song, it's like, all right. Because that's kind of a specific song. And know. then Brian, the drummer, you know, he starts off with it. And I'm like, the first time I heard it, I'm like, I looked at her and I'm like, it's fucking Indian. And she was like, what? And I'm like, Anthrax. So... And I got the biography here. I guess we won't pull up tour dates for him since I'm pretty sure those dates got. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, we got ourselves these guys. Well, we're going to have to have Broken Past on the show, I believe, because yeah. these guys uh, are cool. We're going to video that we're going to play soon as well. But yeah, you have to get a hold of them, man. We'll have to we'll have to do a little fucking podcast with those guys as well, man. Mm-hmm. I'm sure they will be down for that. Tight, tight, tight. So yeah, did you want me to get into this music video, or you want me to wait on that? Let's do it. Let's do it. Check this out. We got the we got a video for them. We're gonna go just like this right here. Little bit of bum. And that's Broken Past, right? Broken Past. Yes, sir. Nice. I am happy to be featuring some tunes on the on the podcast, especially some patriotic tunes, man. I appreciate uh, all of our brothers who serve and protect our country, man, and keep us over here living in friggin' Candyland <laughs> with all of our bullshit problems that don't exist. So we have to make up bullshit problems because we don't actually yeah. have real ones anymore, you know, because guys like that go over there and lay their lives on the line for us man i got all the respect in the world for the military and i appreciate that even though i served from 90 to 94 and my hardest duty was uh korea you said duty (laughs) and that was because i drank so much what'd you do in korea i was uh i was in the arms room so i signed out weapons to my company because uh, I was, I don't want to say what I was on live TV. Yeah. Because it's not, it's not, it's not no. good for bikers to. No, no. You know, don't, don't say hey, anything you don't need to say. I ain't fucking scared. I used to be an MP. I was in fucking military police. Ah! Oh, I see. I see why you didn't want to say anything. You piece <laughs> of shit. <laughs> what? At the time, oh. at the time, I fucking agreed with everything. I was a law-abiding citizen. Oh yeah. Make sure, you, you make sure that, everybody you. else agreed with you too, right? You didn't. You didn't know that, did you? No. I, I could didn't. tell by your fucking reaction. <laughs> I didn't know that, man. You, you know, some funny. of the people I used to hang out with, they would fucking kill me if they knew what I used to do. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, I used to hang with the biker crowd. So. That's funny. That's no, funny. No, it, it's probably not. I'm probably gonna police. get fucking death threats. I'm gonna get death threats now. Oh yeah, exactly. They're just gonna get shanked in the dive bar bathroom. But I, I think it's pretty obvious that I've uh, moved on from that uh, career path. Yeah, you're not exactly the uh, military police type anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's freaking great, man. I love it. I love it. Yeah, I didn't know you were doing all that shit, man. Oh, yeah. I was crazy back in the day. Crazy. I used to drink a lot. I used to drink a lot. I never did any other extracurricular activities back in the day. I have no idea what you mean. I don't know either. I don't, I don't know, know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> this motherfucker. That's <laughs> awesome. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. So what are your plans for the rest of the day, sir? Since you're uh, stuck uh, at home on quarantine with a bunch of cool flights? It's 5.15 flight? here. Uh, probably going to drink some more. And probably uh, 
do some of that, what you're doing. Oh, yeah. Except what's funny is me and my girl, we got some of that stuff and found out there's we have five degrees between us and we can't roll a fucking joint to save our lives. Oh, man. We're, That's we're too using, bad. I'm really good at rolling joints. We're using a Mountain Dew can. <laughs> Bro, you don't even got any glass to smoke out of. What kind of pothead? No. We're fucking upstanding citizens, sir. And you know what sucks is that the uh, smoke shop is not an essential business. No. No, that's bullshit. I know. I'm running out of fucking papers over here, man. I'm going to have to start oh. smoking out of my bong or something. I don't know. See, see like, we, we got our papers from uh, one of the my gas stations had them. And then we quickly realized we can't fucking roll a joint. And so we, I, I knew how to bust up a can from my younger days. <laughs> And been using a fucking Mountain Dew can. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. It's fucking sad. Mountain but... Dew can. I had some kids at the I was at the liquor store trying to get me to go buy them like papers and a pipe and shit and some beer, and I was just like, it ain't fucking happening, man. It's like my neighborhood liquor store. I was like, you're getting me in trouble with my neighborhood liquor store kid. Plus, you're a cop. Like, yeah, I ain't exactly. a fucking cop. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, well, kid. okay. Well, you are a cop. You know, like I mean, I can't. I can't decide that for myself. You know what I mean? You just go, no, dude, you're a fucking cop kid. And I was just like, so I pointed at a can on the ground. And I was like, just fucking. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just okay. fucking Punch make a, a pipe out of a can, and... man. The hell? You guys are not creative enough. When I was a fucking kid, I make a fucking pipe out of anything, man. You are not <laughs> stopping me from smoking. There was just no way that was happening. You know, this nice. shit's getting burnt. And it's going in my lungs. There you go. That's fucking funny. You need to get a bong dog. I'm going to order you a bong online or something. You can't uh -oh. just be sitting around with smoking did, out did of a Mountain Dew can. Did you say bong or dong? Either or. Whatever you need. <laughs> whatever whatever you feel. That I, it, I will have to throw to my you. fucking Joe Exotic Tiger blanket back on me then. For the dong? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fucking great, but no. man. All right, sorry. I just had a moment of clarity. Oh, Yeah. You know what is hugely different about the music scene here than in Vegas? Huh. Is in Vegas, you have, what, three bars you can go to and play rock and roll? If that? No, oh, there's more than that. What? Name them. Name them. I don't know. Exactly. Here, I can drive 20 miles either way and pass two to three bars the, like I've seen Broken Pass in several different cities, you know, so you can build up a, a following of people that aren't from your town, not from your little circle. Because in Vegas, it's your same circle going to every show. Yeah, it's it's a pretty small circle out here in Vegas. You know, here I can do I can be this kind of going bigger time, but. I saw Iron Maiden in Philly. We drove 85 minutes to, to Philly to see Iron Maiden. That's awesome. I can go to New York City, see any and everybody. And drive to Trenton, Camden. You know, it's 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 awesome here for music-wise. It's fucking phenomenal. The so show that Eddie did they bring out? What's that? At Iron Maiden. What uh, what what Eddie did they bring out? Now you know they had two, right? They had a big fucking Eddie at the end, and then they had one yes. that came out like a puppet. It was the one, the last one. I wasn't driving, so I was hammered before I got there. But Good. they had the fucking P forty two Spitfire come down and shoot into the crowd, and oh um, really? Yes, it was. It That's was. Cool. It was fucking. The only thing that sucked was the opening band was Steve Harris's son, uh. and they were fucking horrible. Of course. Their their songs were like songs Iron Maiden would be like, Yeah, we're not playing this. Yeah. It sounded like bad Iron Maiden. I'm like, must be nice to be Steve Harris's son so you can open up in front of sixty thousand people. That's how it works, man. That's, That's how it works. I didn't get all those fucking killer gigs with Cracker Man because my band was good. <laughs> <laughs> you got it because you knew me. We knew, we, you know, we knew people. We were friends with people. They're just like, sure, you fucking, you know, sure, open, whatever. I don't give a shit. You know, it's like, that, I mean, that's kind of how it works in the industry. It's just, who do you know? Do you remember More than playing how good my you birthday? Are. There's what? Do you remember playing my birthday? 
I'm sure I, I. I mean. No, you don't. You don't fucking remember. It was a. You guys was it my, a dive you bar? Birthday. Yeah, it's a dive bar. It's a dive bar. It was you, yeah, you I and remember. Nebula X. Yeah, yeah, I do remember. No, you don't. I can see it in your eye. I smoke a lot of pot, man, and I've played a lot of shows at dive bar, so they blend together. But I do remember. I do remember <laughs> wishing you a happy birthday at dive bar uh, a few years back uh, when we were on stage. I do remember that. And it was it was filmed by some independent fucking internet company they had oh the was that show i camera. definitely remember that yeah. show god damn that was like yeah that was a big deal that was you know well it was supposed to be a big deal it ended up being a bunch of bullshit it should have been I, I never got my copy that's because they never it made it the guy well, never made the i don't think the guy ever made that show tyler said he had a copy of like the raw footage or something yeah like, we had some of the raw stuff we there was never like the the tv show never came out though he actually hit me up to go around and fucking fi- like record and stuff for him, but uh, he just didn't have any goddamn money. He was like, "Yeah, hop in the back of my fucking truck and we'll go do this thing." And I was like, "That's not how it works." <laughs> well, I, I I'll never yeah. forget when I walked in because they're like, "Dude, they got cameras and shit," and it looked like 1970 NFL films. That fucking big ass camera right in the center oh, yeah. of the they fucking big cameras. Area. But it was still tight. awesome. I still remember going to the reveal party of what was put out. It was there downtown at some uh, one of the tranny bars downtown. Oh we yeah, I do remember that. We secret did the, door. the projector screen in the back, and they had like a balcony yeah. and shit. And I showed up, and then all of a sudden I was like, "Oh, Jason's here. Fix everything. Make all this shit work." It's like, God damn it! Every fucking time, every time. Dude, I took so. a girl to that thing, and I go walking in. I'm like, she's like, this is a gay bar. I'm like, well, technically, so? it's, no, it's technically tranny, but yeah, that's the, that's the fucking thing. I'm like, fucking bar. Are, are you here to fuck someone? No. Like, shut the fuck up and go get a drink. Go see the and, band. And I had to pull a fucking book to get the fucking door to open to the back part. I'm like, this, I'm never getting laid. I did get that laid. That bar was cool. It was. It was cool shit. Yeah. Yeah, we were always about that. Well, way before everybody started getting their panties in a bunch about fucking transgender, transgenders and shit like that. Man, fucking crack man was out there fucking yelling at everybody about it. Like, oh, you just need to respect still, motherfuckers. Who cares what like they do? V- uh, Vegas Live Weekly or whatever. Yeah. That episode with you guys when you got live bands banned for like three months. That oh. was fucking awesome. <laughs> That was fun. We had a good I'm time like, with that. Like, these, and that happened right before my birthday. So I'm show. like, these guys are playing my fucking birthday. This is awesome. Oh, we got so many uh, death threats or whatever from all the local bands. They were just pissed at us. They, you know, they were really death threats. Like, you motherfuckers, we were scheduled next week, and you know, we had a show out, you know, a few months from now, and they just called and canceled everybody because you guys smashed up your set. Like assholes. And where are they now? Where are they now? I don't know. Working at fucking Walmart. So. Now, yeah, Cracker Man's gone too, you know. It all, yeah, that sucks. It all falls apart. The hardest part about being in a band is keeping it together. Not oh, yeah. killing I, each that's other. Why, that's why I respect ZZ Top. Yeah, 50 Same years is pretty fucking, fucking guys. impressive, man. Yeah, Go ZZ Top, dude. You guys are awesome. And have you, have you ever watched their documentary? I don't know. The I probably drum. watched a documentary or two on ZZ Top. Their drummer was a fucking massive drug addict, which nobody else was. I didn't and realize they, that. They let him go to fucking get rehab and brought him back in once he finished. Every, the whole band shut down until he was ready. That's awesome. That's how Def Leppard was, man fucking drummer lost yeah. an arm and they were just like well we're either gonna break up or you're gonna learn how to play drums with your feet and that's like yeah, and you, damn dude though that's you got pretty one year impressive. you got one year yeah I, I remember that from theirs you got one year to learn how to play drums with your fucking feet and the motherfucker did it yeah i can't even play drums with two feet and two fucking arms i know some of the guys that like work with those uh with def leopard and uh and they were saying like he would go on stage or he would be backstage playing right so like you know rick allen's feeling it he's like i can get i can kind of get it going but uh you know he's like "Ah, 
uh, we got this guy who's actually playing with Def Leppard backstage. His kid's actually mic'd up. And uh, really? and Rick's just out front playing for a little while. I probably shouldn't be saying this kind of shit. But then there was a day, you know, well, I mean, it was just for the beginning of it, you know, when he first started. Yeah. When he was just like kind of baby stepping him in. But the guy couldn't make it one day, you know, it was just like, and, and fucking, it was pretty, pretty early on, I believe. And he just, <laughs> yeah, Rick Allen did the whole show and he killed it. And they were just like, I guess we don't need this anymore, you know? And he was up there fucking playing with, uh, with nice. his feet, playing drums with his feet and MIDI controllers. Hey, how cool nice. is that? You know, now they. So he's actually doing it. You're not. Don't 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 throw another conspiracy at me right now. No, that was just how they they rehabbed crazy. him in. They they rehabbed him in that way so they could get the tour dates going and shit like that. Nice. Or so I've heard. I don't know. So you heard. So I've heard. Hey, right. I know you, you don't drink that much, right? I haven't had any alcohol in almost nine years. Okay, now I feel like an ass. No alcohol, no what? cigarettes for nine yep. years almost in September. September 11th actually is the day I quit oh, drinking. Shit. Yeah, it was uh, right. it was Anthony's uh, is Anthony's wedding. I flew out for Anthony's wedding. We got Anthony f- Gamas? fucking polished. Yeah, we got wasted nice. ass drunk, and then uh, I was like, I'm never drinking again after this. Like it was a decision, you know. Like I wasn't like, oh, I got too fucked up or something. It was just like I knew it was coming, and I was like, I'm flying back home got fucked up with my boys all my homies i grew up with were there so i got to have a final drink with everybody and then i i got i was so wasted they almost didn't let me on the plane it was 9 11 i was flying back super hungover basically still drunk and they were just like i could smell the booze coming off you bro and they were like we're not letting you on this plane i was like you gotta let me on this fucking plane and i talked my way on the plane and nice. uh, and I threw up the whole fucking flight home into a paper bag in the back. I sat all the way to the back of the plane, right next to the restroom, and I just threw up in a fucking bag the whole flight. And I was just and, Gee, I, and I never drank again. That's a great story. Yeah, it was a good way to go out. It was a good way yes. to go out on my fucking terms, you know. And then I nice. kept, and then here's my secret: I kept a bottle of whiskey and a pack of cigarettes, right, like in the freezer. Every day I'd had to look at it. It wasn't like, keep it away from me, or like, oh, no, I can't go to the bar. I work in a fucking bar. So I had to go right back to the bar and keep mixing bands. And it was like, so when I came home, there was a bottle of whiskey, pack of smokes, and I was just like, yeah, you don't have any power over me. You know, I got this. I got this. And, uh, yeah, I I kept it up for fucking going on nine years now, bro. Nine years of September. Good for you, motherfucker. Yeah. But guess what? There's some of us that still haven't so good for you though man like i'm gonna toast for you dude drinking and i want you to light 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 it up yeah bro you do a light bring it on you ready ah thank you sir cheers brother cheers fucking cheers man yeah, man, it's uh, it's good to have some vice to keep you attached to the world. Well, can you cut this off and then we'll talk? Right, I know what you mean. It has actually been a nice uh, what we're at? Oh Out, man, over almost fifty minutes now. We're at forty-nine minutes. It's been rolling. So well, we'll probably cut, cut right into a nice little 45-minute fucking segment, man. So I like it. So how about we do that? I will uh, say thank you so much, sir. Ohio Jeff, one of my favorite people in the world. I really appreciate being on, my friend. And, uh, yeah, your fr- your buddy's band's Broken Past. You were yes, pushing thank you very much. Them. Those guys are awesome. We'll have to get a hold of them and... Uh, yeah, man. I really appreciate having you on. One more time for uh, Ohio Jeff. Thank you for having me. Greatly appreciate it. Sorry that your life's come to this to interview me. No, but I love I talking to you, man. That's why I had you on. That's why we fucking bullshit for an hour, and it just comes goes right by, you know? Like, it's fun, man. You it's keep sorry. on hanging out. Sorry. And, uh, yeah, there's the first quarantine podcast. Freaking coronavirus making us Skype this shit, but we're getting it done. Thanks for the sorry, East Coast I could, update. Sorry, I couldn't keep the Joe Exotic stuff on. It was just too fucking hot in here. So take off all your clothes. Ha. Ah. <laughs> well, hey, man, uh, you take it easy, my brother, and I'll be talking to you soon. All right, brother. Have a good one.